Muhammad Ali from Brooklyn, New York. Check out Jay Calderon Box. What's up, y'all? It's Jay Calderon, Stan Clear Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's boxing talk. First, we're going to get into the recap of the fights that just took place, and then we're going to get into the upcoming fights that are coming up this weekend. We had on Showtime, it was a triple header starting off with Marcus Brown, the light heavyweight contender, undefeated fighter that put on his best performance when he took on Thomas Top Dog Williams. It was a fight where I thought that Williams was going to put up a very good challenge for this young fighter in Marcus Brown, the U.S. Olympian. But Marcus Brown, who I believe lost his last fight and got a very horrible decision in his favor at the Barclays Center, yours truly was there for that fight. I saw him losing that fight. But in this fight, he definitely showed what everybody's been talking about ever since he came out of the Olympics. He looked very good in this fight, very strong, sharp jab. He was moving very well in this fight and landing those counter punches at will. And basically, Top Dog didn't look like he had anything left in him. He looked like a shot fighter in there. This was not the same fighter that took on Adonis Stevenson a few months ago when he fought for the world title. That was an excellent fight matchup, but I think the lingering effects of that fight when he was knocked out definitely carried over into this fight because we didn't see anything from Top Dog in this fight. He just didn't have the timing on right. He didn't look good in this fight at all. And Marcus Brown, got to give him credit. He looked superb in this fight, the best that he's ever looked. He looked very sharp during this fight. And he dropped Thomas Williams several times to the canvas for the stoppage victory. After the fight, he called out Adonis Stevenson, the WBC light heavyweight champion, saying that he would like to have him next. I really don't believe that Marcus Brown is ready for Adonis Stevenson right now. I would like to see him step up against another level of competition like somebody like Joe Smith. That would be an excellent fight in New York because both guys come from the New York area. I think it would be a hot ticket seller and it would be an excellent matchup between a skillful puncher like Marcus Brown against a very strong, hard-hitting knockout puncher like Joe Smith. So let's see what happens in the near future with this young man, but I don't think he's ready for Adonis Stevenson. Now moving along to the co-feature of the evening, it was the return of Lamont Peterson coming off a 16-month layoff. He had a shot at WBA secondary welterweight title holder David Avinesian. This was a fight matchup that was non-stop from the beginning of the fight to the end of the fight. These guys were fighting in the pocket. At first, you saw Lamont Peterson, who was making his 147-pound welterweight debut. This guy looked like a bodybuilder in there. We saw basically the same game plan that he had against Danny Garcia, where he started off to box, and then he got into a brawl later on in the fight. And you saw these guys fighting in the pocket. He was delivering some very good body work to Evanesian, and it was a good matchup. Evanesian was landing some good shots to Lamont Peterson. Peterson has to work on that defense if he's going to deal with the big boys out there at 147 pounds because he will be in trouble against the harder punchers in that division. We saw what happened when he went up against a guy like Lucas Matisse when he was knocked out very easily against a very strong puncher. But Lamont Peterson got the victory win. It was a good fight. He shook off the ring rust. He gained a WBC secondary welterweight title. He's definitely in line for the winner against Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman. Now, if Keith Thurman wins that fight, that's a very good matchup between those two fighters right there. Style-wise, it's an excellent fight. And a rematch against Danny Garcia, why not? I thought he beat Danny Garcia the first time around. Other people feel differently. I thought that he boxed him in the beginning and then pulled it down the stretch when he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Danny Garcia and take his best shots. A lot of people felt that he ran a lot in that fight. There's also big opportunities there for him, like against Adrian Brona. That's a fight that's very winnable for Lamont Peterson. You got a rematch with Amir Khan. You got guys like Sean Porter and Andre Berto. Those are great matchups. He will be a tough task for anybody in the welterweight division once he gets into the ring with those guys. And I can't wait to see Lamont Peterson back again, but I just hope he works on that defense. Now, moving along to the main event of the evening, it was the return of Adrian Brona, coming off a long layoff as well. He was taking on his old sparring partner and very good friend, Adrian Granados. This was a fight a lot of people expected Granados to lay down, but we saw how tough this kid was when he beat Amir Mann in his biggest victory last year, and this was a big opportunity for him. It was in Cincinnati, Ohio, where Adrian Brona's from. Brona, 
he, he didn't look that great in this fight. And I got to tell you, it was a very close fight. A lot of people felt that this fight was a draw or that Granados won this fight. But I felt that Adrian Broner pulled out the victory when I scored the rounds six to four for Adrian Broner. I just liked it, his clean, effective punches more than Granados. Granados, he was outworking Adrian Broner 100%. He was the aggressor in this fight. He was pushing forward. He was landing a lot of good shots, but Adrian Broner's shots looks much cleaner. They look a lot harder in that fight. He was doing a lot of rough housing with the elbow and definitely the head. A lot of holding in this fight. You know, it wasn't a pretty fight. And a lot of stuff was coming from Adrian Broner that he just didn't look that good in this fight. So a lot of people feel like Granados won this fight. But I think that Adrian Broner barely just pulled out this fight in a very close decision. Where does he go from now? He can't go down to 140 pounds. He can't make that weight limit anymore. 147 is looking like his new home once again. But we know that when he steps up against the top elite like Sean Porter or Marcos Madonna, we saw what happened to Adrian Broner. So can he fight guys like Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, Kel Brook, Errol Spence Jr.? Those guys are going to be very tough fights for him to fight. And I don't think that he's going to fight any of those guys anytime soon. Even Lamont Peterson could beat him at this stage right now. We're going to see Adrian Broner in the ring against a guy like Luis Colazzo, a guy like Robbie Guerrero, those type of fights. Maybe even Felix Diaz. Felix Diaz is a very good fighter, and that will be a good matchup, but maybe Felix Diaz is not ready for a guy like Adrian Broner. It might be an evenly matched fight between those two, but we're not going to see him against Terrence Crawford. Those are the fight matches that we want to see Adrian Broner truly tested in to show that he is the real deal and the future star of boxing. I don't think so. He's just a gimmick. This guy has had very good fortune his way because he's been able to make a lot of money. He made a million dollars off of this fight. He's had a great opportunity to win four world titles in four different weight classes because he's had a guy like Al Heyman in his corner as his manager. Now moving along to the fights that are taking place this weekend on Fox Television Network, February 25th. It's a big night of boxing with a triple header. It's the return of the WBC heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder, fighting in his hometown of Birmingham, Alabama. He's taking on an undefeated heavyweight by the name of Gerald Washington, an American heavyweight. He's a strong heavyweight, but this guy has not had a significant victory to really prove himself of a worthy of a title shot. Now, Gerald is a big, physical, very athletic heavyweight, and this guy has a puncher's chance. He has a good power, and he's very athletic. But does he have the skills enough to beat Deontay Wilder? I don't think so. I think Deontay Wilder is not very much of a skillful boxer as well. He has a decent jab. We've seen some boxing ability when he fought Stavern and he beat him for the world title. But I think he's very clumsy in that fight. His defense is not that great. He's shown a pretty good chin so far, but he hasn't faced a real serious threat in the heavyweight division. He has that punching power, that one-punch knockout, and that's what the fans really love about Deontay Wilder. So I expect the victory win, but you never know in boxing, especially the heavyweight division. You have to see what Gerald Washington brings to the table in this fight, but I expect a knockout victory for the champion. It's a very good card that night. There's another heavyweight on the undercard that I'm very excited to see. He's going to get his shine. Finally, I'm on American television. His name is Izu Ugazu. This guy is from Poland. If you ever seen a back Polish guy, this is it. This guy is the real deal. He is undefeated, a very hard-hitting knockout puncher, and I'm very excited to see this guy. I've been following his career. He's part of the Joseph Parker team, trained by the same trainer, and this guy is definitely going to be tested as he steps up his level of competition when he goes up against Dominic Brazil. We saw against Dominic Brazil, he looked pretty good against... Anthony Joshua in his last performance, he gave a great spirited effort, even though it was a knockout loss to Anthony Joshua, but Dominic Brazil is a very big heavyweight, and you know, I judged him before, I thought he would get blown out against Anthony Joshua, but he put up a very good fight, so I give him respect, I expect this fight to be a very good heavyweight fight, probably better than the main event, but I look to Izu for a knockout victory to be more impressive against 
Dominic Brazil than what Anthony Joshua was able to do. Mark my words, I believe this kid is going to be a future player in the heavyweight division, and this is going to be the door opener for a lot of people to see this heavyweight fighter with his explosive power. He's going to make a name for himself and throw himself right into the mix of the heavyweight division after this fight. Guarantee it. Now, also on that card is a very good junior middleweight championship fight between two young talented fighters at 154 pounds between Tony Harrison from Detroit and also Jared Swift Herb. This is an excellent matchup. It's probably going to be the best fight of the night between these two young talented fighters that can box and also have explosive punching power. This fight is ending in a knockout. Guarantee it's going to go down. One of these guys are going to get knocked out, and I'm going to go with Jared Hurd. I like this guy a lot, and I believe that he's going to pull out the victory and become one of the new players in the junior middleweight division and capture that vacant IBF title that Jamal Charlo just relinquished to go up to the middleweight division. So tune in to Fox. That's my final analysis and my recap over the fights that took place last weekend. I would like to thank everybody that's tuned in and watched my videos. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that little subscribe button. Put your email information in J. Calderon Boxing Talk on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel. Also, follow me on Twitter at J. Calderon Boxing. Follow me on Instagram and join that Facebook boxing group page, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. I'm J. Calderon, Stan Clay Entertainment. Thanks for your support. Keep watching and please subscribe.